website, I want to invite you to connect in community. Here at Westover, we believe the way to grow together in faith and friendships is through life groups. At Westover, we have groups for all life stages. There are groups for families, singles, men, women, young adults, and special interests, or if you just want to make friends. We have groups that meet in person and even groups that meet online. And if the perfect group does not exist for you, it might just be the one you create. It's the perfect way to follow Jesus and love people. So download the Westover app and join a group today. Here at Westover, our mission is simple. Follow Jesus, love people. You may be asking what exactly that looks like. So we've created two classes specifically designed to help you understand each part better and equip you to take your next step of spiritual growth. We believe following Jesus is the first step in your spiritual walk. So our Follow Jesus class will help you discover how you can grow in your faith, learn more about who Jesus is, and give you practical tools to strengthen your relationship with him. At Westover, loving people looks like getting connected. In our Love People class, you'll get a deeper look into all the opportunities we have for you and your family. You can sign up to join or lead a life group, be part of a volunteer team, and find the resources you need to take your next step into connection. We believe it's good to grow, and we know that each of these classes will help you discover what God has next for you. Hey, I'm Albert Santiago, and I'm the director of Westover Hill Sports Ministry. Westover Sports is the largest community outreach Westover Hills Church has to offer. Between soccer, flag football, basketball, softball, and volleyball, we have something for everyone. Westover Sports isn't just for our youth athletes. We have plenty of adult leagues as well. If you're around Westover Sports long enough, you'll hear us say it's more than a game. You see, we believe through sports, we can help develop character and integrity while honoring God. If you love sports, serving people, or want to try something new, Westover Sports is searching for dedicated volunteers to help maintain our programs. You can download the Westover app to find what's available or visit our website at westoversports.com for more information. We look forward to seeing you. At Westover, we have experiences for kids of all ages. In early childhood, we are opening the eyes of infants and preschool age children to the wonders of who God is with three basic truths. God made them, he loves them, and he wants to be their friend. We demonstrate this with fun and interactive elements like worship, small groups, and lots of love. If you feel more comfortable keeping your child with you, the Wiggle Giggle Room is available during all services. This room is open for one parent and a child to enter an environment that allows the children to be more active while their parents are still able to enjoy service. In elementary, your children, kinder through fourth grade, come to a Westover Kids service where they'll engage in dynamic worship and biblical teaching. Most of their time is spent in their small group to help them form life-giving relationships with their group leader and other kids their age. Together, they learn about the Bible and how to have a relationship with God, memorize scripture, and have fun developing friendships with each other. Our goal at Westover Kids is to introduce your kids to Jesus and create a space for them to experience him at each phase of life by bringing the Bible to life. Our teams provide a safe, fun, and engaging experience where your child can be paired with a leader to guide them through service into a closer relationship with Jesus. For students 5th through 12th grade, we offer service experiences that strengthens their faith. It builds relationships and helps them answer the hard questions of life. Our goal is to be a space where students feel welcome and where their friends become family. Each service, students will be a part of a life-giving worship. They'll be encouraged through age-appropriate messages and connect with leaders and peers in small groups. You can visit any of our next-gen environments today.
This is the day that the Lord has made. Come on, let us rejoice and be glad. Here we go. Shines with hope and grace, fills the sky with new mercy each day. We're alive, let your glory pour out, Jesus. There's a joy that overwhelms our souls, cause we know our God is in control. Overflow, let your faith. Your 
deserve every single one you've given me a million ways to be amazed at what you've done i am lost in wonder at all you do i know you by a thousand names and i'll sing them back to you Thank you, Jesus. I am the instrument of exaltation, and I was born to lift your name above all names. You hear the melody of all creation, but there's a song of praise that only I can bring. Who else is worthy? Who else is worthy? There is no
When you begin to think about the name of Jesus and what the name of Jesus means to your life, you can say, who else is worthy? Who else is worthy? There is no one. Oh, sing it out. Who else is worthy? There's no one. Who else is worthy? There's no one. There's no one. Cause you're worthy of it all Yes, you're worthy of it all We sing For from you are all things And to you are all things Yes, you deserve the glory Come on, focus your hearts on him this morning. Say, you're worthy of it all. Yes, you're worthy of it all. Who else is worthy? For from you are all things. And to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Come on, can we begin to lift up the name? Jesus and say, you're worthy of it all. and say she day and night night and day oh let it rise let it rise day and night oh when I wake up in the morning I sing praise day and night oh when I lay my head in
sing that with one voice and say, Yes, you are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Come on, can we give them the glory and say, Because we. you share your very best smile and then you may be seated. Welcome to Westover. My name's Salem and we're so glad you're here. If it's your first time joining us, we want to connect with you. You can scan the QR code or fill out a connect card and drop it in one of the contribution slots or bring it to Guest Central where after every service, you can get to know our lead pastors. If you're joining us online, make sure to connect with us by clicking the link in the description. Water baptisms are today. We believe baptism is the next step after salvation and a public expression of our commitment to following Jesus. And we wanna celebrate with all of you who have said yes to him. Those six years old and up are invited to join us today after third service to take this next step at our outdoor water baptisms. To register and find more details, you can check this event out online or on our app. Just bring a towel, a change of clothes, and your family and friends to cheer you on. We'll see you there. Are you brand new to Westover? We want to get to know you. Join us for Sunday Social, an event for new people. It's the most exciting way to learn more about us, meet our lead pastors, and find your Westover community. Register online today and join us next Sunday after third service. We can't wait to see you there. Thrive is comunidad. Thrive is life changing. Thrive is home. Thrive is a loving space. Thrive is. Thank you for joining us this weekend. You can stay up to date with all that's happening by following us on social media at Westover Hills. To learn about or register for any upcoming events, download the Westover app or visit westoverhills.church slash events. Bye guys. Well, welcome to Westover, whether you're with us in the room or you're part of our online family. Thanks for worshiping with us today. 
And if this happens to be your first time here at Westover, we just want to welcome you. It is an honor to have you with us. We would love to connect with you. And the way that we do that is through our Connect card. You'll find it in the seat back in front of you. And we just ask that you take it and fill it out. Or you can scan the QR code and fill it out digitally. And then we want to invite you at the end of service to take just a few moments and step down the hallway to Guest Central. My husband, Pastor John, and I will be there. And we would love to meet you and your family. But thank you again for being with us today. Well, at this time, we have the privilege to worship God through giving. You know, it's always a joy to give back to God because he was first generous to us and he gave to us. And so when we return the tithe to God, it's a way that we honor him and we say, God, I trust you. I put you first in every part of my life, but I put you first in my finances and I trust you to be my provider. And Westover, we want to thank you for your faithfulness and your generosity each and every week. It is making an impact. You're allowing us to continue to minister here in this community. And I want to share a praise report for you of what happened this past weekend at Thrive. Friday night, we had our Thrive event, and we had over 1,400 ladies here on this campus worshiping God, seeking after him. The altars were filled. It was an amazing time, and I had so many ladies that came up to me afterwards and talked about, and they said, God restored my heart and the brokenness that I was walking in. God answered the prayer. God spoke to me. But the most amazing thing is that we had over 160 ladies give their life to Christ for the first time or rededicate their life to the Lord. And that is worth celebrating because that's what it's all about, is that we give people an opportunity to meet and follow Jesus. And we just want to thank you for your investment in, through Tithe and Kingdom Builders. You allow moments like that to happen. We were able to sponsor 30 ladies from Teen Challenge, which is a drug and rehab recovery here in San Antonio. They were able to be a part. And we were able to sponsor over 100 ladies from Westover to be a part of this moment. And lives were changed. And so we thank you for that. There are several methods to give here at Westover. Choose the method that's the most convenient for you. But before we step into the message, as we return our tithe, let's pray. God, we come before you, and we thank you that we have an opportunity again to worship you. We thank you for what you did at Thrive this past weekend and how you changed the lives of the women here at Westover. And so right now, Lord, we return our tithe. We return our kingdom builders. We ask that you use it to reach more people for you. Speak to us through the rest of the message in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, today we're continuing our series entitled Picture Perfect, where God is inviting us to look at our life and our relationships through his eyes and not our own. Because if we look at our life and our relationships through our own eyes, we have a tendency to distort and to move away from what God has intended for us. And the area I want to lean into today is in the area of communication. Because many of us, we work hard to get it right, but often we get it wrong. And what we say isn't what we mean, and we end up in a place where we're not connected, where we're not moving forward in our relationships. Have you ever noticed that this is an area where we end up getting tripped up? This is an area that is so important. And I believe that God wants to step in and give us a picture-perfect example of how we can live out communication His way in the relationships that He's entrusted to us. You see, when communication goes well, relationships move forward, but when communication breaks down, feelings get hurt, intentions are misunderstood, and often there's disconnection and disappointment. But today there's good news. If you find yourself in a place where your communication hasn't helped you move forward in your relationships, I'm here to tell you that Jesus is here today, even here now in this room, to tell us how we can move forward. In fact, I think the one thing that he wants to share with us the most is that we need to communicate to connect. To communicate to connect. You see, communication is more than just getting our message across to the other person. It is staying connected and getting through to the other person. And I believe that this is what God wants to do. He wants to upgrade us in our capacity to communicate. 
And I believe at the end of this service, as we step into a moment of prayer, I'm believing that God is going to anoint you and your life and your words so that when you communicate, you communicate what's truly in your heart, but you also communicate in a way where God says, well done, you are good and faithful. And so with that in mind, with that in mind, I want to invite you to join me in Luke chapter 2, verses 46 and 47. We're going to look at the life of Jesus and how he taught us how to communicate. Because Jesus was the master of communication, and he's here to speak with us. While you're turning there to verses 46 and 47, let me give you a little bit of context, a little backstory of what's happening in Luke chapter 2. At this point, Jesus is 12 years old. Okay, this is important, 12 years old. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph are traveling to Jerusalem for a festival called Passover, where the nation of Israel commemorates how God saved the nation of Israel from slavery in Egypt. You remember that. Now, after Passover, Mary and Joseph end up heading back to Nazareth. But after one day, they suddenly realize that they have not communicated because Jesus isn't with either one of them. I think Mary thought that Jesus was with Joseph, and Joseph thought that, that Jesus was with Mary, but they left Jesus behind. So they end up spending another day traveling back to Jerusalem, and then three days. So get this, they lose Jesus for five days. Wow. So parents, if you have any residual guilt and regret for leaving one of your children behind for 15 minutes... Or maybe some of you are recovering still from being left behind years or maybe decades ago. Just know you're in good company. They left Jesus for five days. Well, once they returned back to Jerusalem, they found him where they should have looked first. He was in the temple. And he was talking to some religious leaders. This is where we pick up the story. Luke chapter 2, verses 46 and 47. After three days, they, speaking of Mary and Joseph, found him in the temple courts. Pay attention to the verbs here. Sitting among the teachers, listening to them, and asking them questions. Verse 47, everyone who heard him was what? Amazed. They were amazed at his understanding and his answers. In this passage, we see four things that Jesus does to communicate effectively. And today I want to share with you four ways to talk like Jesus. Here they are. Sit, listen, ask, and answer. Sit, listen, ask, and answer. And to help you participate in this, say it with me. Sit, listen, ask, and answer. Now some of you may be saying, but Pastor John... Those first two, he wasn't really talking. Well, you're right in one way. But in this moment, these first two, he was actually communicating. But sometimes, sometimes actions speak louder than words. And his actions revealed the intentions of his heart to these teachers of the law. In fact, he was teaching us, but I think he was also teaching them about how they should communicate. If you remember... The Pharisees and the scribes had a tendency to talk down to people. And I think in the midst of this, he's teaching them how they should interact with other people. And I think he's teaching us as well. What Jesus also teaches us in this interaction with these religious leaders is he teaches us that we are always communicating. There's never a moment when we're not communicating. As some of you know... In a previous season of my life in ministry, I was a professional counselor and I worked with people. And often, one of the prevailing complaints that people would come when they'd come in for counseling is they'd say, we don't communicate. And I'd say, really? Because I think we always communicate. We're always communicating. Now, our communication style and approach, it can either help us or it can hurt us. But the truth is that we're always communicating. Let me give you some examples. If I roll my eyes at my wife, am I communicating? Yeah. Is that helping my marriage? No. If I yell at my kids, am I communicating? Yes. Is that helping them trust me as their dad? No. If I send an angry, really frustrated email to a coworker, am I communicating? Yes. Is that going to help me build that relationship 
with that coworker so they can so we can work together? No. Truth is that we're always communicating. So I think we need to change what our focus is. It's not about us communicating, it's about us communicating in a healthy way. Someone said this, and this is a principle of communication. Everyone communicates, but few connect. Everyone communicates, but few connect. And I think today we have the choice. Are we going to be among the everyone, or are we going to be among the few? My prayer is that we would choose to be among the few who choose to connect, to communicate, and to communicate, to connect. Now let me give you a quick overview of these four ways to talk like Jesus. Number one, Jesus sat down. Why? Because sitting down actually reduces stress and anxiety relationally. When you go to the doctor, you don't want them standing down, you don't want them to stand up and you're sitting down while they're giving you information about your health. You want them to sit down. Why? Because that makes them feel more comfortable. It makes you feel comfortable, it makes them feel comfortable, and it creates connection. Number two, Jesus listened because he was committed to showing them respect. Didn't matter whether they were respectable or respectful or not. He chose to listen because listening communicates respect. Number three, he asked questions because he wanted to show interest and curiosity. And the Bible tells us that after he did these three things, he was able to answer with wisdom, with clarity, with full understanding. And the Bible tells us in verse 47 that they marveled at his understanding and his answers. If we want people to marvel at our understanding and our answers, I think we need to do these first three. Sit, listen, and ask questions. With that in mind, I want to share with you a few ways to communicate like Jesus. Number one, to communicate like Jesus, think relationships first and then results second. Think relationships first and then results second. Say it with me. Think relationships first and results second. To great communicators... Connection is the priority, and content is secondary. Why? Because we can't communicate unless we're connected. Has there ever been someone in your life, maybe a coworker, who has said an underhanded compliment, or they've said something that just hits you wrong? Are you more likely to listen to them or not? What ends up happening is you may be present in the interaction but if they're not connected to you and you're not connected to them, you don't hear them. And so great communicators understand that connection is essential to communication. And they are prioritizing preserving the relationship over providing content. Because in relationships, if connection doesn't matter, then we can talk however we like. We can say it however we like. This is what we see on social media, right? People that you don't know or that don't know you well, they'll send you a message or you'll see this on other people's accounts that people make criticism a part of what they say. And the reason they do that is because there's no relational connection. I believe that God's inviting us to do something different. I think he's inviting us to value connection so that our communication will be more effective. Now, here's one way to think about it. Communication is like a game of catch. You talk, they listen. They talk, you listen. And to illustrate this, I'm going to invite some, some guys out to help me to illustrate how catch works. Catch only works if both people win. Both people have to agree to the terms and the unspoken rules of catch where you've got to throw it so the other person can catch it and vice versa. You see, if someone decides to break those rules, eventually the game of catch is going to end. If someone throws the ball over someone's head, the other person can catch it. If they throw it short, the other person can't catch it. If they throw it off to one of the sides, the other person can't catch it. And if they throw it too hard, the other person can't catch it. In the same way when we communicate with people, if we're not committed to the process, the exchange, what happens is sometimes the ball gets dropped. And what happens is then we have to pick things back up to get things restarted. There's the lack of the flow in the movement of things. You see, if we overthrow, what happens is then the other person has to get diverted and go and grab the ball and then come back. If we communicate in that way, what we're doing is we're not communicating respect. If we, if we communicate short and we talk down to people or we've, if we're in a, a conversation about a specific topic 
and we get diverted from that or we divert the conversation, what happens is that that process breaks down. And in the same way, if we yell and express anger, even though it feels good to us, the other person can't receive what we're saying. But if both people are committed to the process and they're being mindful of how they're communicating with one another, then communication can move forward, just like catch. Thank you, guys. You see, and this is where it becomes practical. In marriage, you can be right or be married, not both. (laughs) In business, you can hold your ground and be right, or you can stay employed, not both. I think this is a stewardship issue. It's our willingness not to just get our message across, but to steward the relationship effectively. And when we steward the relationship, we're committed to the process. We're committed to the context and the conditions of the conversation. Here are a couple ways to communicate effectively. Number one, create a safe space for conversations. We can have tough conversations when people feel safe. When we're willing to speak the truth in love, people can receive what we're saying. Next way to communicate effectively and to value the relationship is to start with the heart. We need to decide ahead of time how we're going to show up in the conversation, what we're going to say, what we're not going to say. We're going to make sure that what the intention of our heart is reflected in our actions. But we have to start with the right intention. It, has, it can't be, hey, I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. Instead, if the outcome is, I want us to stay connected after this conversation, it changes how we operate in that. Another way is to practice your message ahead of time. They tell us as pastors to practice what we preach. Well, I'd say to us, when it comes to communication, we need to practice what we're about to speak to other people. Because when we practice it, we're valuing them. That message gets in our heart, and then it goes out from us. And that's when God can pick it up and carry it to that person's heart. I want to share with you, this is the reason why we're committed as a church to helping you advance in your relationships and move forward. You see, this is one of the reasons why we're having an event called Blended and Blessed. It's a, it's a conference, it's a live stream event for blended families. And we want you to win. If you're in a blended family, we want you to win. We understand that there are additional complexities and there's different relationships that need to be navigated. But we want you to know that God has wisdom for you to help you win in your blended family. And we want you to register today because I believe that if you set time aside for God to speak to you, He will help you learn how to value the relationships. And if you value the relationships, then the results will show up. Here's the second way to communicate like Jesus. Talk less, listen more. Say it with me. Talk less, listen more. In the age of social media, listening is a lost art. Everybody has a platform. Everybody has an opinion. People want to be heard, but no one wants to listen but here's what we learned from the life of jesus is that he was committed to listening why because he wanted to communicate to the people who were right in front of him i see you i want to hear you i value you and ultimately i love you people want to be heard and understood we need to be committed to understanding rather than being understood now husbands this is an area where i think we need to work on we need to work on us listening more and talking less And now, some of you may be great at listening, but I'm constantly reminded by my wife that I'm not always a great listener. There's some moments in my conversation, or rather her conversation with me, that I realize that I haven't been listening. Because what will happen is she'll say, well, what do you think about that? And I'm like, think about what? (laughs) And she said, I just told you. I said, please tell me again. And then there's other moments There's other moments when I ask her, hey, what are we doing on this specific day? Or what's the next thing that we're going to do? And she said, she'll say, we already had a conversation about that. Really? We did? What did we decide? Please remind me. (laughs) I'm working on it. Pray for me. Pray for her that she has grace. Pray for me that I listen better. Parents, I think many of us, we encounter this with our kids. They say, After we've talked to them and talked to them and talked to them, they say, but you're not listening to me. I think so many of us were worried about getting our message across that we failed to hear what's in their heart. I want you to know that when you get your message out, 
They may not be listening to you. But if you listen to them, you actually hear what's in their heart. It's like spying on your kids. Think about it that way. Listening is like spying on your kids to understand what's happening in their heart and in their life. So be willing to do that. We need to make space in our relationships to listen to one another. And listening, it's an active process. It's not just something that you dial in. It's, it's not a halfway thing that we can do. We have to be fully engaged. Because listening halfway is not listening at all. So what do we need to do? I think we need to be present in the conversation fully. I heard someone say this one time. In their place of business, they would say in a meeting, be here now. Be present. Be fully dialed in. And that requires us to set aside the distractions, the other things that we're thinking about, to be fully dialed in, to really listen. Also, we need to listen with our ears and our eyes because listening is a full experience. It's not just listening with our ears. Because when we look at someone while they're speaking to them, we're communicating respect, but also we're able to pick up cues. You know, when your wife says everything is fine, is it fine? No. If she says, go ahead, is that permission to do it? No. If she says, we'll talk about it later, is that a good sign? No. And probably that's because we haven't listened well. We need to be willing to listen with our eyes and our ears. I tell this to my wife, and I really mean it. If you don't have my eyes, you don't have, have my attention. And the same is true parents with our kids. We need to make sure that we have their eyes and we have their attention. The other way is repeat what you heard. When we repeat back what we've heard, what we're doing is we're showing respect. It's this interchange. It's the exchange. And finally, whatever someone says, be willing to write it down. Because your brain is going to lie to you. Your brain's going to say, hey, I got this, I got this. Your brain doesn't got it, I promise you. Here it is. The dullest pencil is better than the sharpest memory. Write it down and you'll remember it. Most importantly, when we're committed to listening to the other person, we create margin in our relationships for God to work. For us to hear him and for us to hear that person's heart as well. In fact, I want to suggest to you that in a conversation with another person, the most important conversation isn't the person right in front of you, it's the conversation with God. Because vertical conversations in the middle of a horizontal conversation will make that horizontal conversation better. Why? Because the Holy Spirit will speak to you about what to say and what not to say. How to respond and how not to respond. What to do and what not to do. And I've discovered that the Holy Spirit he won't interrupt you. He'll actually help you listen better. Because God wants to speak to you in the middle of a conversation. And he also wants to speak through you to other people. This is what will happen. And this is found in Jeremiah 33, verse 3. It says this, Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. If you're willing to call out to Jesus and ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you in the middle of a conversation... He will reveal to you what the other person needs to hear. And your words will be timely and they will bless that other person. But we must be willing to be silent enough to hear God speak because God won't shout over us. Because God whispers. He speaks to us in the silence of our spirit. So we have to quiet our spirit. You see this in the life of Elijah. Elijah has to get quiet for God to speak to him. The Bible tells us that God speaks in a still, small voice. So even in our relationship with God, we need to talk less and listen more. Because if we do, he'll help us move forward. The third way to communicate like Jesus is be curious, not critical. Be curious, not critical. Say it with me. Be curious, not critical. Curiosity may kill the cat, but it won't kill your relationship. It'll actually save your relationship. Because criticism is really easy for us to offer to other people, but it's really hard for other people to receive. Because criticism puts people on the defensive. And when people are on the defensive, then they're worried about protecting themselves, not being engaged in the relationship. And so what do we do instead? If you're frustrated in a conversation, be willing to show some self-restraint and be willing to ask questions to get more understanding. I'll just say this, in Galatians 5, the last fruit of the Spirit is self-control. Self -control. And if we choose 
to not prioritize this last fruit of the Spirit. We're going to be critical and not ask questions. Now, let me just be clear. Being curious is not saying this, okay? Why are you the way you are? I know that's a question, but that's not a great question. Were you born under a rock? That's criticism. How could you do such a dumb thing? That's not, that's not, a, that's not curiosity. That's criticism veiled as a question. Instead, what we need to ask is, I noticed the trash didn't get taken out. Help me understand why. Or, why wasn't the room clean when you ask your kids? What prevented you from cleaning your room? This is a way for us to get more information so we can move the conversation forward. You see, we learn this from the life of Jesus. He asks questions in his ministry while on earth. In fact, he would often lead off with a question. We look at the Gospels, what we'll discover is that Jesus asked 339 questions. Now get this, Jesus, who is God in the flesh, is omniscient, which means he knows everything. He, knows every, he knew everything then, and he still knows everything now. So he knew what the other person was thinking, but yet he still asked questions. Why? Because if he just provided an answer, he didn't create engagement. And questions invite engagement. So Jesus asked questions to connect with people, to help them understand what they were thinking, to understand what God's will was, to pull them into God's preferred future. And questions, if they're good enough for Jesus, they're good enough for us. Jesus was a great communicator, and great communicators ask great questions, and we must do the same. Be willing to suspend judgment. Ask questions so you can get at the heart of the matter. Last and final thought that I want to share with you is this. To communicate like Jesus, realize that connecting gives us the privilege to speak. Jesus, at the age of 12, this young boy was among older men and those older men I believe thought they were smarter than Jesus and so what did he do he worked his way through the process of communicating he sat he listened he asked questions and then he responded and because he was willing to do those three things it gave him the privilege to speak. I know many of us, we want to be heard. But I believe that if we're committed, if we're truly committed to understanding, then being understood will come. And I believe that Jesus wants to anoint your life and your lips and your words and your ways so that your relationships can move forward. He knows our life isn't picture perfect, but this framework is picture perfect. I believe that today he wants to anoint you for his purpose. And so today as I close, I want to invite you to stand with me. And I want to pray over you that God will help you live out this framework in your relationships. I'm inviting you today to decide in your heart that you're going to be committed to communicating to others God's way. I want to reassure you, if you're committed to this process, you'll see God move in. You'll see the Holy Spirit anoint your words, give you great capacity, and you can bring transformation. I'm specifically praying today for broken marriages, broken relationship with kids, fractured work relationships. I'm believing that God can give you what you need in the area of communication. So I want to invite everyone to bow their heads and close their eyes. I want to pray over you. Jesus, I pray right now that your people will see that if they choose your words and your ways, if they're willing to talk like you, then they will effectively reflect you in their relationships with others. I pray, Lord, you give them capacity, supernatural capacity and ability to communicate your way with others. God, I pray for broken relationships broken marriages, broken family relationships, that, God, you would bring restoration, that, God, you would empower them to connect so they can communicate, and so they communicate to connect as well. I pray, Lord, you breathe fresh air into your people today. Anoint them. Anoint their words. And in the moments when they want to say something that 
that doesn't advance the other person or honor you, would you put a guard over them so when they speak, other people hear you through them? Bless your people today. In Jesus' name, and everybody said? Amen Amen and amen. I want to thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a delight to have you here at Westover. Join us next weekend as I talk about conflict resolution in a way that honors God. God bless you, and we're dismissed.